John Jones isn't throwing Rampage a bone. So he got the belt, don't he? Dream is back with number 17. He broke his freaking arm. And it's Showtime holds a Fast and Furious tournament. <laughs> this is Fight Network's preview show. Yeah. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Davis and you're watching Fight Network's preview show. We have a whole lot of MMA to break down with UFC 135 in Denver, Colorado and Bellator 51 in Ohio. So our analysts John Ramdean and Robin Black will be on shortly to give us the lowdown on this weekend. First up on the show, we're starting with the battle for the UFC's light heavyweight title as champion John Bones Jones defends his belt against former champ Quentin Rampage Jackson. John Jones will make his first title defense when he clashes with Pride and UFC veteran Quinton Rampage Jackson. Jones, whose only defeat came by way of disqualification, beat Mauricio Hua by knockout to win the championship. Rampage has won four of his last five fights, most recently a unanimous decision over Matt Hamill. If Rampage catches in the left hook, you know, I think he'll be a little bit worried about doing flying kicks and flying knees and flying elbows. But if, if, um, if John Jones comes out and gets off early with those kind of moves, it's going to be it's going to be either a long, drawn out, you know, beat down or a quick night, you know, but for John Jones win winning. So I think the thing for Rampage is come out and hurt him early and show him what it's like to have to fight when, when your bell is wrong or, or when you're when you're in danger. I give the edge to the black guy in that fight. For sure. It's a battle between two of the sport's biggest stars. One, a former champion who helped escalate the popularity of Japanese mixed martial arts when he joined the Pride organization in 2001. His foe, the reigning champion, is a 24-year-old juggernaut and a man that many consider to be one of the pound-for-pound -pound best in the world. John's delivery reminds you, uh, if, if you were to use a parallel, the way that the Michael Jordan played basketball when he was young, you knew right away that these guys can't stop him. The 205-pound king, Johnny Bones, has continued to impress with his near-unstoppable momentum and devastating attacks while dispatching the young Lions and top-ranked competitors in the division. While a motivated Rampage has rededicated himself to recapturing the title, some feel he never lost, and he recently moved to a private training facility in Denver, Colorado to focus on that task. Will John Jones be able to handle the experience and ferocity of a determined former champion? Or can the Memphis native deal with the size, strength, speed, and confidence of a man that many believe will stay at the top of the mountain for years to come? It has all the makings of a classic war with more than a title on the line. Quinton Jackson is out to prove that he will take the best the champion has to offer, while Jones is ready to begin his era of dominance and take out another top-ranked star. Now it's over to John Ramdean and Robin Black to break down the card for UFC 135, starting with Bones and Rampage. Guys? Thanks, Sarah. It's a sensational matchup in the 205-pound division with all the marbles on the line. Quinton Jackson taking on John Jones. A lot of people call John Jones the future because his youth, his athleticism, and his tenacity. Will he be able to stop Rampage in this fight? Hey man, you gotta buy into John Jones. He is all those things you said. He's young and he's exciting. You know, he's creative. But I think if you're really being an honest analyst, you can't fully buy into this guy yet. He's never been hit on the chin. He's never really been tested. He's never been behind on a scorecard. Yes, that's a sign of how good he is, but we wouldn't be talking about a football team as the greatest team ever that had never been scored on. We wouldn't be talking about a hockey team that had never had a shot on net as being the greatest. And this guy it still has to be tested. And I think Rampage Jackson is just the man to do it. Well, mixed martial arts is all about evolution, and we haven't seen any type of evolution from Rampage's game. This is a guy that moves forward, uses his boxing. His game plan is to try to land his big, heavy punches on the jaw of his opponents. Will he be able to do that against John Jones, who has the biggest reach in the entire sport? Well, you, you kind of hope so as a fan because if this is just another John Jones, you know, being very elusive and not getting hit, we're not going to find out anything yet about this guy. I personally think that Rampage, yes, he's, he does one thing, but he's very, very, very good at that one thing. Comes forward, always aggressive. This is a good test for John Jones. If Rampage does get his hands on him, he can hurt him bad. Rampage says that he feels that he can walk right through John Jones's attack and he'll try to land one of those big punches. I think if he can do that, yes, he will be successful, but I think it's the youth the athleticism, the reach, all of the tools of John Jones that will have him uh, winning this fight over the course of five rounds. Of course, I'm not going to count Rampage out because that's uh, ridiculous because he's still one of the best in the 205-pound division, but I think John Jones is really considered the future for a reason. UFC Hall of Famer and former welterweight champion Matt Hughes will battle the younger Josh Koscheck. Hughes was knocked out by BJ Penn in his last outing, but he has won submission of the night five times and holds a record 18 victories in the UFC. 
Koscheck was on a three-fight winning streak until George St. Pierre snapped it by unanimous decision last December. Ultimate Fighter Season 5 winner Nate Diaz will face former Pride lightweight champion Takanori Gomi. Diaz is coming off back-to-back -back losses at welterweight but has earned Fight of the Night honors four times. Gomi has never been knocked out and earned KO honors when he stopped Tyson Griffin in 64 seconds at UFC Live 2. The undefeated Travis Brown, whose most notable victory came when he knocked out Stefan Struve at UFC 130, meets Rob Broughton in the cage. Broughton enters his sophomore fight with the promotion, riding a five-fight winning streak. In a heavyweight bout, Ben Rothwell, who is 1-1 one one with the UFC, will take on Mark Hunt. Rothwell was sidelined this past year with a torn ACL, while Hunt snapped a six-fight losing slide after knocking out Chris Tasher at UFC 127. Now we shift over to kickboxing where it's showtime will air live here on Fight Network this weekend from Brussels, Belgium as they hold a history making tournament called Fast and Furious. On this night a fighter must win three fights in order to be crowned tournament champion. It's showtime returns with an exciting one night tournament featuring some of the world's most exciting 70 kilogram kickboxers. The quarterfinals feature an interesting rematch between K1 veterans as fan favorite Gago Drago takes on 24 year old Arthur Koshenko. Following recent setbacks against Hanata Watanabe and Mohamed Kamal, Kishenko moved his camp to the acclaimed Mike's Gym, where he's been able to reel off three consecutive wins. The Ukrainian's ability to land combinations and avoid Drago's tunnel vision proved to be the difference in their first encounter, and he'll look to repeat those actions. Two-time K1 World Max champion Andy Sauer returns to its showtime to take on Armenian Harut Gregorian. The 28-year-old Dutchman is known for his ability to attack opponents with unrelenting combinations from all angles. Sauer comes back again with a right and an inside cut kick, outside cut kick by Sauer. This, coupled with his knockout power, make him a heavy favorite in the tournament. Oh, Former It's Showtime 70 kilogram champion Murat Durecki finds himself with an opportunity to avenge a loss against current 70 kilogram kingpin Chris Ngimbi. Durecki willingly engages in a slugfest and possesses the necessary killer instinct to end the fight. <laughs> In their first encounter, the African warrior claimed the title in what was a hard-fought five-round decision, and he will look to replicate those actions in the first round of the tournament. Robin Pokerface Van Roos Malen heads into a rematch with the pitfall, Shahid Ulad El Haj. The Golden Glory product consistently pushes the pace in his bouts and demonstrates tremendous heart. El Haj enters his bout with the edge and experience, and while his pressure overwhelms some opponents, Shahid's really going in with big shots! Talik going for the kill now. It should play right into Van Roosmalen's style. On Saturday night in Belgium, eight fighters enter and only one man will exit as it's Showtime 70 kilogram max winner. After the break, we're taking a look at the loaded Dream 17 card featuring the Bantamweight Grand Prix. Over to Saitama, Japan now, where Dream 17 features the World Bantamweight Grand Prix. But before we get to John Ramdeen and Robin Black's predictions, we're breaking down the tournament and the rest of the card for you. The journey to crown Dream's top Bantamweight continues as eight standout fighters from around the world come together to battle it out in the quarterfinals. After defeating Yoshiro Maeda, Atsushi Yamamoto, and finally Mazakatu Imanari in the Dream Japan Grand Prix Finals, tournament winner Hideo Tokoro enters this first round bout with momentum and confidence as he prepares to take on WEC veteran Antonio Bonuelas. Bonuelas is coming off a loss to Miguel Torres and makes his dream debut. It's an entertaining clash between two fighters who aren't gun-shy and who may engage in a fan-friendly brawl. And a look the foot behind the name, there it is! There it is! Tokoro's wicked submissions! Former Dream Featherweight champion Bibiano Fernandez attempts to have a successful campaign at Bantamweight, but his first challenge is a stiff one as he takes on deep Bantamweight champion Takafumi Otsuka. It's deja vu for the pair as they met at Dream 7, 
in the opening round of the Featherweight Grand Prix, which saw Fernandez earn the decision. The young Japanese fighter will look to avenge his loss in this exciting encounter. Dream Japan Grand Prix finalist Mazakatsu Imanari takes another stab at the tournament format when he faces the silent assassin Abel Cullum. It's a battle of grappling gurus as the former King of the Cage flyweight champion tries to bounce back from a two-fight losing skit against the skilled veteran otherwise known as the Master of Leg Locks. Rounding out the tournament action, Novo Unyao product Rodolfo Marquez makes his dream debut when he takes on undefeated submission specialist Yusuf Sedulia. Eight hungry gladiators begin their quest to determine Dream's best 135-pound fighter and in the process become the promotion's inaugural Bantamweight champion. Robin, the Dream Bantamweight tournament kicks off. Takafumi Otsuka from the Deep Promotion, which you and I know a little bit about, takes on former Dream champion Bibiana Fernandez, who calls Vancouver home. This guy's a former World Jiu-Jitsu champion. Will he use those abilities, use his grappling skills to force this fight down to the ground and void the stand-up skills of Otsuka? Well, you alluded to the fact that we know something about Otsuka. This guy is the uh, deep bantamweight champion right now. Deep, an organization on, the, on Fight Network. You've got to watch. It's fantastic. And this guy has looked amazing in the fights that we've called. Honestly, you could look for Otsuka to, to upset Fernandez, and Fernandez has to be the favorite. Bibiana Fernandez moving down to 135 pounds. We're seeing it across the board. Fighters now know if they want to make an impact, they have to fight at their optimal weight. And 135 pounds could be just that weight for Bibiana Fernandez. He might be bigger, he might be stronger. Will he be able to take this fight down to the ground against the younger Otsuka? Well, we've seen Otsuka is a great scrambler. He's able to get back to his feet. But uh, Fernandez, I got to roll with him once at Toronto BJJ. He was, he was instructing there, and he is made of steel. Like, at 160 pounds walking around, he is made of steel. So at 135, he will definitely be a beast, like you're alluding to. But Otsuka is a great scrambler. He'll be able to get back to the feet. It's going to be a great fight. From one deep champion to another, former featherweight champion, Mazukatsu Imanari, the master of the leg locks, takes on former king of the cage champion, Abel Cullum. And if this fight goes goes down to the ground, buckle yourselves in because it is going to be a treat. Two of the best and most exciting grapplers in all of mixed martial arts. But is Abel Cullum that naive to go down to the ground with Imanari? Well, it could be naive or it could be extreme confidence. And Abel Cullum is an extremely confident fighter. This guy went undefeated for many years and uh, he's a badass standing. He's a badass on the ground. I think that he will not be afraid of the game of Imanari, but at the same time, when you go to the ground with Imanari, it can be over like that. Both of these two, there are four great matchups in this Bantamweight tournament, but these are the two to watch. I agree. I am going to go against your pick. I'm going to pick Bibiana Fernandez, and I think that Abel Cullum is going to keep this fight standing and get himself a unanimous decision victory. Shudo and dream veteran Tetsuya Crusher Kawajiri, who has won six of his last eight bouts, will clash with former lightweight champion Joachim Hellboy Hansen in a rematch of their 2006 meeting. Hansen's coming off a split decision win over Mitsuhiro Ishida in May. Two staples of the dream promotion will collide in a rematch five years in the making. Japanese standout Tetsuya Kawajiri makes his featherweight debut against a rejuvenated Joachim Hansen. The tough-as-nails wrestler Kawajiri is a top-10 contender. However, he has had difficulty defeating top-tier competition. He eviscerated him with the elbows. Failing to capture a championship, the Japanese fighter drops down to featherweight, looking to once again establish himself. Dropping victories to Shinya Yoki, Bibiano Fernandez and Hiroyuki Takea, Hellboy Hansen went back to the drawing board and returned in top form. The Norwegian native looks to continue his winning ways, but he will have to avoid the Crusher's boxing prowess and knockout power. It's a bout that will inevitably see Hansen pit his sleek submission against the T-Blood product's unrelenting ground and pound. Though it is Kawajiri's 145-pound debut, a win over a former Dream Champion could result in title contendership. Conversely, if Hansen secures a fourth consecutive win, he may once again find himself with an opportunity to grasp the gold. Known as the Gracie Killer, Kazushi Sakuraba looks to break his three-fight losing streak when he throws down with the undefeated Jan Cabral. Cabral's won all of his fights by submission and is making his dream debut. Pride veteran and judo black belt Kazuhiro Nakamura will battle Gerald Harris who makes his dream debut. Nakamura is coming off back-to-back -back wins and Harris started 2011 off with a loss but rebounded with a win in May over Anthony Ruiz. 
Lightweight champion Shinya Aoki takes on former WEC champion Razor Rob McCullough in a non-title fight. Aoki's on a five-fight winning streak, having submitted four of his last five opponents, while McCullough is making his dream debut. Former Sengoku lightweight champ Satoru Kirioka, who has won three straight, faces ex judo champion Willemie Freite, who was on an 11 fight winning streak until he dropped a unanimous decision to Waylon Lowe at UFC Fight for the Troops 2. Former two time judo lightweight champion Takeshi Inoue, who has never been stopped, will lock horns with former judo welterweight title holder Kao Uno. Inoue is coming off back to back wins, and Uno is coming off his first win in six fights. The international audience, as well as the domestic crowd in Japan, will get a rock-solid supporting cast in addition to the crowning of the 135-pound Grand Prix King. In a lightweight clash of styles, current champion Shinya Aoki will try and sink his hooks into striking specialist Razor Rob McCullough in a non-title affair. The judo black belt will fight tooth and nail to avoid the former WEC champion's lethal Muay Thai skills before securing the takedown and successfully securing a submission. And Bear Bomb is forced to tap just like that! However, if the 34-year-old American can keep it standing and punish the gun-shy Brazilian jiu-jitsu expert, he could get a TKO victory. Living legend Kazushi Sakuraba returns to the Dream Ring for the first time in 2011 to take on undefeated Nova Uno product Jan Cabral. The Gracie Hunter is coming off of the first three-fight losing skit of his career, and this is a must-win situation if he wants to maintain his legacy. And Cabral could be just the right opponent. In nine professional fights, the Brazilian has defeated all of his adversaries by submission, which might be a difficult task to accomplish against the mat-savvy Sakuraba. <laughs> The 28-year-old is a natural welterweight who will be moving up to face a bigger fighter with the highest profile of all he has faced. In another battle of Japan versus Brazil, submission ace Satoru Kideoka locks horns with skilled 24-year-old William A. Freite. The former shooto champion was one and done in the UFC after dropping a hard-fought decision to rugged grappler Waylon Lowe in January, and a win over a top-ranked fighter like Kideoka could be his ticket back to the world's biggest promotion. If the former Sengoku torchbearer can force the Brazilian to his back and control from top position, a decision win is sure to come his way. A middleweight contest pits two grapplers from two different disciplines against one another when pride veteran Kazuhiro Nakamura challenges tough alumni Gerald Harris. After winning three straight in the UFC, the American Harris was paired with Brazilian bomber Mikhail Takao, and after losing by decision, the 31-year-old was released from the company. After winning at Tachi Palace fights in May, the former stand-up comedian looks for two in a row. To Harris, a win over the seasoned judoka is no laughing matter. In what should be an entertaining featherweight affair, two former Shudo champions meet in the ring when Cal Uno takes on Takeshi Lion Inoue. Uno has competed at the highest stage throughout his career, facing a who's who in the fighting arts. With 44 professional bouts under his belt, the 36-year-old could be nearing the end of his distinguished career. Inoue brings a solid skill set to the table and expect him to push the pace in order to break his fellow countrymen. A 145-pound matchup pits Joachim Hellboy Hansen against the crusher Tatsuya Kawajiri. Kawajiri moving from 155 pounds down to 145. We talk about fighters fighting in their optimal weight class. This might be exactly what the crusher needs. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be big and strong at that weight. There's no question about it. And he has been undersized at 155. What I like about this fight so much is that neither of these fighters are really defined by their collection of skills. They're more defined by their heart and their drive and how tough they are and how hard they are to beat and how unbreakable they are. And when you put two fighters of this nature together, you're going to see the fight everywhere. You're going to see a lot of action, but you're going to see a ton of heart. I think that Kawajiri will be able to get this fight down to the ground, gain top control on Hellboy Hansen, who's very skilled off of his back, but I don't think it will be enough. I think that Tatsuya Kawajiri will earn a hard-fought unanimous decision over Hellboy Hansen. And then we look at the 105, cut you off there, but 155 pound champion Shin Aoki taking on former WEC 155 pound champion Razor Rob McCullough. It really is a clash of styles. You have the grappler, uh, grappler and jiu-jitsu fighter in Shin Aoki taking on the former Muay Thai champion in Razor Rob McCullough. The one question I think everybody's asking is, can McCullough avoid the ground game? Can he sprawl and brawl, keep this fight upright so he can punish the Japanese fighter? The answer to that question is no. No, he cannot. This is a, these are the fights that Shinya Aoki absolutely dominate in. These are also the fights that he adds to his highlight reel with. Shinya Aoki is a great submission guy, and we all talk about that, but he's also a great wrestler. He, and if he can't wrestle to the ground, he'll pull that half guard. 
I don't think there's any way Razor Rob can avoid this hitting the ground, and I don't care how much jiu-jitsu he's been training, he's going to get submitted when he's there. Well, we do know that Razor Rob McCullough has lightning fast hands, pinpoint accuracy, and we also know that Aoki does not like to get hit in the face. So if Razor Rob can tag him on the chin, I think it could be a very short night for the Dream Lightweight Champion. Bellator Fighting Championships kicks off another tournament this weekend, and we have the preview coming up after the break. You know, my future's so bright at that time, I gotta wear shades, boys. Just a few weeks into Season 5, Bellator Fighting Championships has successfully kicked off their welterweight and middleweight tournaments, and this weekend they'll be holding their 51st installment in Canton, Ohio. Not only will the prelims be loaded with local talent, this marks the start of the promotion's bantamweight tournament. The self-proclaimed baddest man on the planet, Joe Warren, joins a class of eight exciting bantamweight competitors in this season's 135-pound tournament. The current Bellator featherweight champion drops a weight class in hopes of winning belts in two different weight categories. Building a reputation as a slow starter in recent fights. And it was fight. Good right here. Good right He's down. Warren has shown a remarkable ability to overcome adversity. Facing Warren in the Bellator cage is 40-year-old Cuban Alexis Vila. The ATT product is making his promotional debut and has only gone the distance once in nine pro fights. Despite both these fighters being decorated wrestlers, look for this fight to remain on the feet, with Vila aiming for the upset knockout. Also dropping down to bantamweight is former Elite XC 135-pound champion Wilson Hayes, who will likely showcase his newly improved stand-up and go for the knockout when he meets former Shooto Brazil 135-pound champion Eduardo Dantas. After giving 145-pound champion Joe Warren all he could handle and ultimately losing a hotly disputed decision, Marcos Galvao returns to the Bellator cage as he faces former WEC bantamweight champion Chase Beebe, who will likely utilize his wrestling and look to sink in his patented guillotine choke. It's him. There's the tap! First round! Submission win for Chase Beebe. Finally, Season 3 Bantamweight Tournament finalist Ed Wild West looks to push the pace and wear out 11-1 Luis Noguera on his road back to the 135-pound tournament finals. All the Bantamweight action kicks off at Bellator 51 at the Canton Memorial Civic Center in Canton, Ohio. Thank you to John Ramdean and Robin Black for breaking down all the MMA action for this weekend. And on behalf of Fight Network, I'd like to thank the ballroom for having us in their space. And thank you for watching. Enjoy the fights this weekend. Then we get a 35 belt, and then we put a big gold medal on my neck. You know, and then that's just, you know, we'll see what happens at that point. You know, my future's so bright at that time, I gotta wear shades, boys. I gotta wear shades, I'm sorry.